All right, there we go. We'll wait on a few more folks to be able to come on in. Hooray! Dims, I was hoping that you were going to be able to help today. <laughs> this Dims comes off a of mute, or maybe not. Uh, hi. Oh, perfect. That is your mic check. Brilliant. Okay, so are we missing lists today? I don't think so. Um, I'm going to give it a minute or so. Uh, I don't have anything direct as I check all of my various things about like where people might be, but we'll give it a minute because I'm not sure if we're going to use the entire time this morning. We'll see. Hey, sorry I'm late. Excellent. Super. I was I was not sure if like the, you know, I was giving it a minute or so. Yeah, my fault. <laughs> sorry, all, everyone. All good. All good. We've actually got um uh frankly most of the people I expected today. So um uh, I have already um, informed Dims that he gets to be able to lead a lot of the discussion around uh what we're gonna lay out in here. But uh Liz Dims, I'll I'll let you all. Kind of yeah yeah point. pretty much let's just welcome everyone hi everyone let's go through the usual uh logistics and antitrust and things and uh then i think we only have that one topic which is about the proposal to make graduation smoother and easier and lovelier so dims do you want to take it away oh uh, so sure thanks liz um so I'm sure a few of you here, if not uh, all of you, have gone through the graduation process, and it's kind of nerve-wracking, right? Uh, and part of the issue that is nerve-wracking is having to find the TOC sponsors, and uh, you know, how do you do that? 
Um, so that's part of the bootstrapping issue that we have. Like, yes, uh, sometimes uh, the, some of the TOC members might be part of your project, then it makes it easier to, you know, just hit them up to become a sponsor for your project. But most often than not, you know, you don't know the people and you don't know uh, who to approach, uh, you know, so there's a, there's a bootstrapping problem here. So uh, we were trying to, uh, as a TOC, we were trying to think about this problem where we want to kind of like avoid people having to go hit up uh, all the TOC members and, uh, oh, hey, would you like to um, sponsor us? And also, you know, the CNCF staff and like, so having to go through that uh, process of, uh, you know, one-on-one -on -one, uh, trying to advocate for your project um, and not knowing who might end up being your sponsor. Um, so that's the setup here. Um, did anybody agree, disagree with uh, this uh, kind of setup that, I, that we have right now? True. Yes, Mukilika. In our case, uh, obviously one of the TOC members was working on the project. So it helped to find the sponsor. Okay, thank you. Yeah, so uh, so what we ended up doing was, um, you know, when a project is ready um, to do this, uh, you know, they want to uh, get into this process of like, okay, we want to tell, hit up the TOC members and say that we are ready. Um, what can they do, right? Um, so we said that uh, they could give us a one page, one pager, we'll go through a template later. Uh, and then the one pager would be like a PR uh, template that they would add uh, to the TOC repository. Um, and the TOC would review in private and hopefully one of the TOC uh, 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 you know, steps up as a sponsor. Uh, and if not, if then the least that the TOC as a body can do is get back to the project and say, hey, this is the feedback as the whole of TOC. Um, you know, if we can't find somebody uh, who, who wants to do this or we feel that the project is not ready, uh, you know, anything of that sort, give them feedback and say, you know, we can, you know, come back to us later or give them enough guidance to say, uh, he here are some of the things that you can do and you can come back to us. Also, uh, we don't want to do this. Uh, the PR is going to be public. The review is going to be in private and we are not trying to like um, remove the tags from the equation either. Uh, in On the uh, PR uh, that's public, uh, the tags can obviously give their feedback also. And if, there, if uh, the feedback is going to be sensitive, then they can uh, use private channels to get the feedback back to the TOC as well. The other thing that we were trying to think about was like, um, if most of the process is in private, then it's probably not a good thing either. Um, so, it, and we want uh, to provide um, some time and space to the projects to advocate for themselves. So, uh, you know, we want to set up some project reviews in a public setting where uh, we can go through uh, the template, uh, the, we, the, you know, the TOC can ask some questions and the project team members can answer those questions and ask follow-up questions uh, to the TOC um, advocating for the pro project. So that is the tweak that we are proposing. And this will be right at the beginning. Uh, when uh, uh, one of the projects wants to, uh, this doesn't change any of the existing stuff. Um, it just gives a streamlined way of getting some feedback, uh, concrete feedback without having to hit up individual TOC members. Uh, does this make sense as a concept? I think there's one little detail that I thought we had uh changed which was the idea of um the public meetings being scheduled because i think we actually yeah. decided that if they it, this only comes up if there's a project where the toc has decided 
uh, well, we've looked at the one pager and nobody wanted to volunteer and we had some feedback for the project. We give them the feedback and then maybe the project disagrees, which is completely fair. And in that case, we want to have a public discussion about it. Um, but I think we decided that should just happen as soon as possible. We shouldn't just be right. trying to schedule on on because obviously we don't want this to be a blocker. Right. Yeah. And uh, best case scenario, you shouldn't have to wait for um, uh, the you know a scheduled uh, public meeting. Um, you know, yeah. it could happen out of the box. You do the PR, everybody files on the PR and there's a TOC sponsor uh, who steps up and you're all set, right? Um, so it's it's not trying to, this is not even trying to add more barriers. This is more uh, structured towards giving you concrete feedback. Okay, uh, let's, is there one more page, Amy? So some of the things, um, I don't know, how do you want to do this list? Um, do, do you want to go through this? Uh, I don't think we've- This was really just here to be able to show what the current criteria is and then talk about like how we're changing it as well. Um, because I know that that was something that people had questions about. Right, um, I think this might be a good segue to add to the, go to the other point, which is, uh, there are some things uh, that are objective and there are some things that are subjective, uh, right? Um, so the, the one pager, when we get to the dra draft, um, we'll cover both. Um, so, you know, it, the, also the idea here is like, we don't want to keep repeating the same information in multiple places. So the one pager will not cover, you know, the things that are all, you already know and you, you're already, uh, you know, on the hook for um, during uh, the process. So uh, it sounds like you're ready to be able to move on to the one pager. Yes, please. Cool. Amy, after the call today, uh, maybe we should uh, open up a PR with this template too, right? Okay. Um, yeah, there's an issue currently open as far as like being able to link to this, but if we think we're ready to go, then yes, being able to drop in like a PR saying this is what like the new one pager is likely to be. Um, right. So uh, the questions uh, here um, uh, are kind of like free form, um, but we do want to limit um, uh, how how much text that you would, and we don't want you to like copy paste text from elsewhere and drop it in here too. Um, so it's structured to like elicit a response. Um, like, why do you feel um, the project is ready to graduate? Like, and what are the kind of things that has changed um, after you joined the incubation? So we want you to like spend some time thinking about these things and like giving us an answer uh, rather than, you know, a uh, a canned answer um, or, or uh, you know, a copy paste from somewhere else. Uh, we we want you to uh, like think about it and give us something exactly what you would say to our face, <laughs> right? Um, so that's the way we were thinking about it. Um, so some of these questions, and it's it's not if you take the third question, it's it's not like we are trying to you know, put a barrier for uh, graduation and say, if you can't answer this question right, we will we'll not graduate you. It's not uh, meant to be that way. It's more about like, how are you thinking uh, about this? Uh, how, how do you um, think uh, we should do this in the long term? How can you set yourself up uh, the project as well as the users, you know, uh, thinking about them as well? So, um, can you scroll down a little bit? And this, the last one is definitely something that I really like, which is like, who is gonna be the best advocate for your project? Who should we go talk to, uh, to get real information about like, um, you know, how useful it is to them or uh, how good their experience has been and, and things like that. So um, any questions here um, about, um, you know, the questions themselves or uh, what they are trying to make you think about? Are these questions instead of the previous? Um, no. 
criteria or these are just a way for the project to answer those criteria? Uh, this, this is just part of the one pager um, that uh, the project summits uh, when, they are, when they want a TOC sponsor. Josh, did that answer your question or should we use more words? No, 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 less words is good. I think a lot of the point of these questions is that it's the kind of subjective things that we're trying to evaluate as the TOC when we look at a project that's up for graduation. And it's not a, because it isn't a checkbox thing and because there is some subjective um, evaluation here, why not ask the project their view you know if if you are a project you should hopefully be thinking about these things already um you should have a view on these things you know your project best you know um you know how the what the plans and visions for the project are so why not ask for your view up front about these things that we'd be trying to consider anyway all right and if when you are going to do a one-on-one -on -one pitch with a TOC uh, sponsor, you would end up talking about these things. And here we are trying you to get you to put it in, in a form where it's uh, readable by all the TOC members in one spot. Ricardo, did you have a question? Yeah, I had a question. So how often will the TOC review uh, this one pagers as they come the, in. They, yeah, as they come in, Ricardo, we have a, a, a private session going on, um, you know, every few weeks. So we'll, as soon as uh, the PR for the uh, for this comes in, we'll review it immediately. Got it. Got it. Um, this some um... question in the chat about um a uh, table or spreadsheet that maps like members of projects are sponsoring. This is currently available up on the uh, public TOC doc and I see a bunch of people clicking on in. So perfect. Um, I'm hoping that answered the question, Bob, but happy to take more. Okay. Thanks, Bob. So this is just to make your life easier <laughs> and ours too uh, in the process. Um, so we don't get hit up uh, from multiple people at the same time uh, and you have a way to uh, get what you need. Um, so uh, if there are no other questions, uh, then we can continue the conversation in the in the PR for the template. And again, we are trying this out. Uh, we'll see if this works. If this works, we'll continue. If not, we'll tweak it. I, uh, I really like the fact that this makes clear kind of the top concerns of the TLC when they're reviewing the project, uh, whereas the the PR that you fill out, it's obviously a bunch of information that should be provided, but it's not clear like what level of focus or importance each of those items are. Thanks, Ed. And also okay. thank, thanks, uh, thanks everyone for really taking a look at this. Um, so uh, obviously, you know, many people have gone through this process and uh, there's been a lot of, I think, variance in the process. So, uh, so I think it's really timely to re-examine this. Thank you. Thank you, Ed. Yes, thank you. I, th I think we, um, we appreciated particularly that we don't have a great format for uh, not exactly saying no to a project, but giving the feedback to a project that we don't think it's quite ready yet. We it, and, and it makes it difficult for TOC members as an individual to sort of say, well, I personally think actually we, we, we our individual opinions are not really so much what's important. It's more our collective opinion. So I think this gives us a nice um, format for the TOC to have that discussion and, and figure out what feedback we want to give to projects. Yes. And, and hopefully and set them on the right path. It would also be really useful if projects had more uh, guidance uh, in preparing for the graduation process. I guess today it's left up to a lot to the SIGs, but of course each SIG kind of handles this process differently and the preparation and ex you know, expectations going into the process. Uh, there's also kind of high variance in that. 
Uh, and so it would probably, I think the projects would be in both a better shape when it actually comes up for review as well as make the graduation process um, smoother. And if we can make kind of clearer, uh, you know, what exactly what should be done. And I also saw kind of, you know, some slides uh, in this deck saying, you know, making clear what is required versus, you know, uh, what are things that are evaluated, but, uh, but the process may be a little subjective. But of course, like the criteria, as much as possible, we should try to make objective if we can. And whether the evaluation is subjective or not, I think it's important to uniformly apply them to. You know, uh, I agree somewhat, Ed, um, but the trick here is um, if we make it all objective, then it's easy to- No, no that's what I was saying. It can't yeah. be made all objective, but it's good to clarify what is, you know, like a check off item like Liz was saying. And, right. Yeah. yeah, and you know, in the end, we have to think about like how we we are going to ensure we as a community are going to ensure that the end users uh, of our um, projects, um, you know, can rely on them for the long term, right? And uh, how valuable it is going to be to them, uh, and that is going to be subjective at at some point. Right, and it would also be good to get a official like a consensus. Uh, opinion or write-up of the TLC from each evaluation, uh, not just right. a collection of the opinions of individual members, but what is the consensus of the members. Exactly, that, that's what we are trying to do here. When you have that PR, you will get feedback in the form of either a, a TOC sponsor or, um, or um, some feedback from the TOC as a whole saying, this is uh, what we would like to see from you or an invitation to the next meeting and say, let's let's go talk about it in a public meeting. Right, Those are the and, three and what the process should be going forward. So obviously yeah. this, is not, this is not an easy problem or a process. Uh, and so I'm really glad that the, you know, the TOC is taking a look at this issue. Thank you so much. Yeah. You're welcome, Ed. I have, Back. sorry. I wanted to ask one question about the preceding uh, page or slide, and it made one note of the independent security audit. Uh, is now a good time for that, or should I uh, shelf that? Sure, go ahead. There you go. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, long short, good day. My name is Matthew. I'm helping out uh, SIG Security. Uh, one of the previous slides just noted that it uh, there is a need for a independent security audit, and I was just curious if that should necessarily be a one provided by SIG security, should there be like a landing page or a collection of all the high level pieces of the audit or can it be pretty much any entity from some list or meets that some sort of sign off criteria? So these are actually um, the audits that get paid for by the CNCF, the, the kind of professional, you, you know, uh, somebody should be paid uh, you know proper money to do a full security audit so the security assessments that sig security do are you know great and valuable and volunteers um so we definitely you know see that as a very valuable way of helping projects earlier on in their life cycle but at the point where we get to graduation i think in terms of actually telling the end user audience you know this is safe to use it behooves us to have a, you know, paid for third party independent audit. Um, and that's what this is referring to. Yeah, the, the proposal was to make the tag security assessment something that happens before the first security audit, eventually, so that it lays down the groundwork for, you know, what the project sees its threat model and responsibilities as and then that would help the um, or security audit when they're doing pen testing and deciding which bits to focus on um, but that's not a strict requirement yet but probably will be eventually thank you my only follow-up question is is there a um, specific criteria for those agencies or those businesses do they require specific certification or is there a, a recommended list or they actually get sourced by uh, by cncf staff i don't know if chris is on the call but it's been organizations like Trail of Bits uh, in the past. Right. Yeah, that was my comment. It was going to be like in the past, we've used Cure 53, we've used Trail of Bits. 
Um, and if there's other ones that we should know about, happy to know. So. And there is, I don't know if, you, if you're aware, there is an RFP process. We took a, put together an RFP and we send it out and uh, vendors respond to it. Um, and I'm they, actually really familiar with this. <laughs> Kubernetes, right? <laughs> Thank you. Great questions. Anyone else, uh, any comments on this proposal that they'd like to raise now or questions? I think we're gonna leave the one pager uh, and the PR you know, available for, for comment and, and if have, people have any uh, changes they want to propose, we'll, we'll make that correction to remove, remove the, um, the scheduled public meetings. Um, I think we've got some notes on that somewhere. Otherwise, I think we had one more question, which is, uh, is it only two meetings in a year? That, that's the part that we want to remove that that shouldn't be there. Um, so we have public meetings twice a month and private meetings twice a month, you know, give or take some some breaks around KubeCon. So uh, we should be able to I, I think the the goal should be that we should always be able to get through a one pager within a month because we'll have two meetings. It should, should be no reason why we can't get to them within a month. And if there is feedback that then needs discussion, we should just be trying to schedule that in the next available public meeting. Okay, okay. I think these, these public meetings don't normally have a hugely packed agenda, so it should be completely possible to, you know, if there is a, a project that, needs public discussion we should be able to schedule it within one or two meetings i'm sure thanks okay let's wrap it up amy then i think that's pretty much it we've got no other slides in here um happy yeah. to be able to have the floor open for any other questions or p things that people wanted to bring up just want to say thanks to dins for presenting that and working on the uh, the one pager and so on. Yes. Uh, I had something brief. Um, uh, following up on last meeting, um, we have we have a couple tech leads that we intend to nominate for tag observability, uh, and we're assuming that the email process is the still the the right one. It, it starts with an email to the TOC. Is that the preferred process for nominating tech leads? Yeah, so I think, um, and other SIGs feel free to sort of shout in with the way that they've done this. I think typically within the SIGs themselves, they might have had a process or an election or a call yeah. for nominees. And uh, I, we just saw a good example of this come through from, um, I think it was SIG app delivery, wasn't it? Tag. 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 Sorry. <laughs> I'll oh, let you go for a little bit on it. Tag. I saw that come through and, and we'll be doing something similar. Uh, just yeah. as, we, as we head into the next meeting for the tag where we'll surface these two nominees that uh, have come up already. Um, wanted to make sure that we were just in alignment on process. Yeah. 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 And if you have questions, talk to your uh, uh, tag liaisons. Historically, the um nomination of tech leads or the assignment of tech leads has been, I think to how Liz had described it, um, sort of left to the tags themselves. And so th they're not necessarily being an outstanding requirement for such formality, but, but to each, you know, to each their own, correct me if. Anyway. Yeah, they do need to be um, elected. That there is, I can't quite remember what the, the phrasing is, but there is a, a kind of election process um, just to make sure that the the TOC is sort of getting oversight that the you know the qualified individuals are, are, are yeah, so the, yeah, the, the tag comes together uh, between chairs, uh, yeah. chairs I mean I, do, I don't think we've ever yet on. seen a situation where it's been controversial but it's it's just to partly it's to keep us all in the loop so we know who uh, of course yep that's exactly what I was well. asking just want to make sure I follow the right process I guess the best practice is uh, get some nominations in, and you know keep it transparent, and then you know nom uh, and finally send us an email. Uh, I think there was one more quirk here. I think we were not supposed to 
vote on the <laughs> PR itself, right, Amy? So we need to figure that out on our end. I know uh, so. what happened in here. We did a trial run of being able to actually have GitHub. We've never actually formalized moving things to GitHub. We can, but the canonical thing right now is please vote on an email and I will remind all of you where, where the emails are. Yeah. Thank you. Cool. Doesn't sound broken. <laughs> Great. Speaking of that, is that, is that, a, is that an open item? Speaking of that, is that an open item? Like uh, voting on GitHub or voting on... It could know. be, but I want us to get through graduation first. Okay. Right. So put in the backlog. I think, you know, we did an experiment. <laughs> or not all to draw conclusions from that experiment. <laughs> all right. Any other questions or points anyone would like to discuss today? Okay, I think we are good. Thank you very much, everyone. And uh, hopefully steps forward to a more efficient graduation process. So thanks very much, Dims. Thanks, all. Okay. Thank you. Bye, everyone.